today's video I'm going to show you how to change um, electric guitar strings so you might know how to do this already but you might pick up some um, helpful tips on the way so first of all obviously you need your guitar I've broken my E string on the guitar and I've got a pack of strings and these are Elixir these are co uh, coated strings, OptiWeb coating and I prefer coated strings just because they last a lot longer they don't rust so sometimes you'll have a cheap pack of strings and these wound strings they get rusty and they go out of tune and they don't sound very good also these strings I feel uh, like when I play guitar I like them to be really smooth I don't want them to go black or to have any corrosion so these are my favourite strings um, any coated strings really um, I just find they're much better they are more expensive but they last longer so they are cheaper in the long run it's also good to have like a pick or a plectrum and also this amazing little guitar kit um, Ernie Ball Musicians Toolkit it's got most of the tools that you need it's got a string winder different um, allen keys for the different parts of the guitar to adjust this really cool screwdriver with a Phillips end and also a flathead end right so I think I'm going to start so first of all when I change strings I only do two strings at a time so I'm not going to take off all the strings and, um, and then put all the strings back on because the guitar is actually balanced um, from the springs on the tremolo and also the tension in the neck that's adjusted with the truss rod um, if I take all the strings off basically all that tension that's been pulling on the guitar is going to be released so I only want to do two strings at a time I don't want to take them all off put them all back on again and then find that I need to really set the guitar up again so this one's already been snapped so I'm just going to take this one off and just to note this particular guitar has these little tuning lockers which are really cool and I'm going to take those off as you can see it needs a slotted screwdriver but I'm not just going to use the screwdriver metal to metal I'm going to use this cloth so I don't damage any of the metal so I've only turned it a little bit let's see if that's loose enough nope still still locking the little string in more yep yeah, and pull the string out so it was a bit fiddly with this particular guitar with the locking tuners obviously look at the guitar that you have before you um, attempt to change the strings make sure you know how it works because there are a lot of modern types of hardware that are quite fiddly back in the day it was literally just a hole you put your string in and wind it but with this one it is a bit strange over there. Right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the second string, the B string. I'm going to loosen it off just a tiny little bit, just so there's not as much tension. Get the pliers. This is the part that makes guitarists nervous because they don't want the string to ping and hit them in the face. I'm putting my hand on the fretboard just because if there is a lot of tension and the string pings, I don't want it to damage any of the wood on the guitar. Do the same thing. Okay, so I've taken two strings off at the tuning pegs. Now, this is really important to take them out completely in the bridge. So if I just turn the guitar over. As you can see, I'm on a table with um, some mats on, just so I'm not going to damage the guitar. You can buy special equipment where it holds the head and protects the body, but you know I'm, I'm just not going to spend any money. I'm just going to use things that are lying around in the house. What's really important is making sure that I take the strings out completely at the bottom. You might think that's a silly thing to say, but I've actually seen guitars 
where the strings have snapped and people have left the ball ends of the strings in the bridge and they just put new strings in. Don't do that because that's going to cause a lot of havoc when you need to change strings again. So I'm just double check in. Yep, so the ball end is still stuck in on this string, which is a bit of nine. So I'm going to see if I can use a part of the string, or actually, I'm just going to use an Allen key. Just stick that out. Nearly got it, it's a bit of a pain. So it's also a good idea if you're changing strings with a bridge, a trevelo bridge. I'm just going to pull this bridge down. It's going to give me easy access to this ball end. So I would recommend definitely, if you are changing your strings and you do have a tremolo, put the tremolo arm in because sometimes you might need to push the tremolo arm down to emulate, you know, having all the strings on and it will help you um, change your strings. Now you can just change the strings or if you've got like a little kit like this, polishing kits, this is a good time to clean um, your guitar up. So I'm going to do a little quick clean. I will do a full clean at the end. So this kit that I've got is a Dunlop System 65 guitar kit. Comes with a guitar polish. I've had this for years. It lasts a very long time. Also comes with lemon oil, which you can use on uh, rosewood fretboards. Don't use it on maple fretboards. And it also comes with a string cleaner and conditioner, which I've never actually ever used because I like to keep my strings as natural as possible. Don't like to rub lots of different things on them. I've got a gauge 10 and a gauge 13 string. So I'll just get the string out, unwind it. Now I'll have to turn the guitar over on its side, make sure I know the right hole. Put that in. Thread it through. Make sure I pull it and I know that the ball of the string is right near the bridge because what I've done in the past is I've put the string in and the ball has actually stayed here. And when I've tried to tune the guitar, it's been in tune and then all of a sudden it pops out. So I've got to make sure the string is connecting on notes in the right place. Put my saddle in the right place. Oops. Okay. I'm just going to move this out of the way for a moment. Right. Now this is where I'm going to give you a tip. So I'm lining up the string. I'm putting it in as it would be normally. I'm trying to keep some tension on the string. I'm not letting it really loose. If I was just to put the string in and start winding, that means I'm actually going to be winding the tuning peg a lot. And I don't want to do that because um, they are gears inside and ideally you, you want to move the gears as less as possible. You don't want to keep moving them and moving them because they won't last as long. So what I've done is I've lined up the hole so it's in line with my string. So I'm, gonna, I'm happy where that is. Now I'm not just going to stick it in like so and turn it. What I'm going to do is wrap it around a couple of times first. So just look at the direction. Make sure you get this right, otherwise when you start tuning your guitar you'll be turning the tuning peg um, the wrong way and you'll be getting confused with how the string ties and so it's coming around like this in that direction. So it's coming up, approaching it and going to the left, wrapping it round. So when I change strings, I wrap it around first a few times. So I think with the thinnest strings, I'll wrap it around maybe that's once to twice, maybe three times. And then I'm going to go back in again. I'm going to pull it here, making sure I'm holding down the string here so it doesn't all pop out. I have to start again. Right, I'm going to pull that now. 
and as you can see that looks like the string is um, nearly nearly done obviously I need to tighten it but it just means that I haven't spent all that time turning the tuning peg and potentially just wearing out the gears again if you don't have a string winder you will be here for hours and you'll have a sore wrist so do see if you can get a string winder or get one of these guitar kits so I'm going to tighten that up now Okay, I'm not going to completely tune it up just yet because I want to do the second string. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with the second string now. Now this is a good point um, to tune the guitar. Um, the reason is, as I said at the beginning, I want to make sure that all the tension in the strings are going to be um, the same tension as when the guitar is in tune. Now I'm going to do um, the G and the D strings and then I'll be back when we're ready to do the A and the low E strings. So now I'm left with the last uh, two strings, D and A. Now with the thinner strings, I did say previously to wrap it around three or four times. With the thicker strings, you don't need to wrap it around as much. So don't wrap it around as many times. So I'm going to wrap this around once, like this, and I'm going to leave it like that. So I'm happy with the way I've changed the strings. I'm just going to make sure these are locked. Yeah, they do lock automatically by the looks of it. I'll tighten the string. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tune the guitar up as best as possible. I'm going to use my handy app called Guitar Tuner. My favourite one at the moment. very loose. So the reason why that string is really loose is because when you change your guitar strings in your bridge with a tremolo arm on, when you loosen a string it's actually making the other strings tighter and when you tighten a string it makes the other strings looser because it's all balancing on these springs. So you might find that if you do tune a string you might have to revisit it again retune it again. As you can see my E's gone way out of tune again. So I'm just going to carry on and keep tuning this guitar. So the guitar's in tune. Um, if I was just to play the guitar it would just it'll go out of tune over and over and over again. So what it's really important to do is to make sure your strings are really stretched in. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So I'll pull it up here. And if they are brand new strings, they can take a good stretch in. But if they are old strings, I wouldn't recommend this because you can just snap the old strings really easily. So I'm trying to stretch it as many places as possible. Also I'm going to 
stretch it around where the knot area is, where the string tree is, stretch it everywhere. Great. So the reason why I'm stretching all the strings is so that when we come to play the guitar, the strings are going to stay in tune for literally their life. It will need a slight adjustment each time you play. But if I wasn't to stretch the strings, if I was just to leave it, by the time those strings were stretched in, these strings are going to be very old and then they won't be staying in tune, they won't sound bright and it'll be time to change the strings again. And that's a guitar that's in tune, I've stretched the strings, it should stay in tune for quite a while. Um, what I would do is I'll have a little play, usually play some open chords, really hit the strings and then tune it again. And once I'm happy with the strings and they're all stretched in properly, I'm going to chop them up here. And I also push them down just a little bit, just so they're out of the way and I'm not going to hit them with my hands. Because I have stabbed myself before with the end of the strings and it's not very nice. Just make sure that when you do push them down, you're not going to push it into the fingerboard, uh, not the fingerboard, sorry, the headstock, and damage the lacquer. I'll push it down. Again, if that's in your gig bag or your case, that's not going to rub against the, the case and damage the case. That's going to be safe and it's out of harm's way now. I'm not going to hurt my fingers. Gonna give the guitar a quick polish and a clean and then we're done.